It's that time again when the Powerpuff Pals will take you into their live discussion room where you can join in their space, listen to their discussion, relax, get your chocolate tea because this is where you will hear some really life changing, heartwarming, soul stirring discussion about how God is leading these pals into a closer and more meaningful world. Before we relate it to share a very exciting topic and still yes, exciting topic. And not only exciting, but I know this topic is one that we all struggle with, whether or not we're Christians or non-Christians or non-church goers. We all struggle with this topic and it is a topic of forgiveness. Let me whisper, Yes, forgiveness is one topic that we all struggle with and we all fight with and we all want to know how to get around it to be more at peace. Pals, welcome. And so today, the topic of forgiveness. It is hard, I can tell you. It is a very hard, hard moment in one life when they cannot let go. Do you have any thoughts to share on the whole idea of forgiveness? How do we forgive? When do we forgive? And why should we forgive? Well, let me start by saying that forgiveness requires you to get over something that someone has done to you. So I'm saying that um, forgiveness requires you to get over something bad usually that someone has done to you and to be in a position where you can actually forgive them mm-hmm. and so forgiveness is not an easy thing because it's really a requirement to love your enemies mm-hmm. to do good to those persons who hurt you you know um and so it is something that challenges us as human beings mm-hmm. um it challenges christians I think it challenges all of us at some point or the other in our life. Mm-hmm. Well, um, so rightly said, um, Georgette. Um, so in essence, it has nothing to do with the oppressor, the person who has done wrong to us. The you know forgiveness is uh, actually for our benefit, um, which we will um, discuss later on, but. As George is saying that it is not an easy task. Mm-hmm. It requires to love despite the hurt. Mm-hmm. And uh, this really cannot be done um, within our own efforts because <laughs> not like us, somebody um, does us harm we want, you know, to do but harm to retaliate. Mm-hmm. Um, but God is saying that uh, we should forgive. That's the charge for us to, to forgive. Yeah. Uh, when I look at the word forgiveness and the whole idea of forgiveness, I think about a feeling that one feels, that bad feeling, that feeling of anger, that feeling of hurt that one feels because someone has hurt them. And it is a war that you struggle with from within. And nobody can see you should forgive on your face. Nobody sees that. But it is the emotion that is within you, the, the, the bad thought, the, the bad um, ideas that you have against the person that really, that really pushes you. And as Christians, it is even harder, as Georgia mentioned, for us to forgive because we are expected to do the right thing. We are expected to follow the precepts and the principles of God. We are expected to do that as Christians, but... It is not easy. It is not easy. To pull that forgiveness out of, out of us and throw it at the person who needs it, it takes hard work. And Kadian said last week, the human, the, the human, the flesh side of us, the flesh side of us mm-hmm. is the problem when it comes to forgiveness, Georgia. The yes. flesh side of us. And, and, and so in discuss, discussing forgiveness, we also need to look at the impact of unforgiveness. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. um, there are persons who are so hurt and so angry that when they come across their oppressor, they get ill physically. Their stomach hurts, mm. their head hurt. They are they're so angry each time they see the person, their heart race. Mm -hmm. And you know, it has been shown that persons who hold unforgiveness are usually persons who end up with terminal illnesses, cancers, mm -hmm. um, because they hold up so much resentment in their hearts mm -hmm. that it is easy to become ill you know physically and mm -hmm. so forgiveness is not for the oppressor forgiveness is for our benefit mm -hmm. because every time that we let go of hate and anger and bitterness we free ourselves mm -hmm. of sickness and negativity mm -hmm. amen 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 i i have to just say that for you have to for you to be at that place for in your life where you have to you know be battling with you know over whether or not i should forgive a person it means that um whatever the person did to you did hurt you you felt betrayed mm -hmm. you know and as a result you're angry um so you could look at it and say but my feelings are justifiable you know mm -hmm. i was hurt mm -hmm. and uh, you wanting to retaliate it would be justifiable in the human sense because yes this person yeah. hurt you whether it was deliberate or it was unknowing oh, but regardless man. of what it was the fact is that you are hurt and as george rightly says is that uh, as you know we are going to emphasize that unforgiveness does more harm to you as the person mm -hmm. than uh, um to the other person who you have not forgiven yeah. Some of the times you hold up this person for so long mm -hmm. and they're not even aware, they don't even remember <laughs> what they, you know, what they have done to you because they probably have never even said anything to them about mm -hmm. it. Um, and there are some persons who just refuse to apologize or to admit that they have hurt you. Mm -hmm. What do you do in this position? Well, the reality is, as Georgette rightly said, is that if you are unforgiving unto others, there are physical symptoms that you're going to start developing mm -hmm. as a result of this unforgiveness. Right. And even if your buried body perish, well, yes, because you know we'll all die one day. Mm -hmm. But why, you know, prematurely um, cause um, attract illnesses upon yourself because you are holding a grudge? Mm -hmm. The other thing, the psychological impact, if you are um, unforgiving, you're going to be so consumed with uh, this problem and what this person has done to you that you are unable to, you know, be free, to, to be creative, mm -hmm. to think, to be happy. So mm -hmm. even your joy is and your peace is being robbed because you're mm -hmm. forgiving. The, the, the most important thing, is that because we ourselves aren't perfect. Right. You know, it is so important that we forgive others because in the Lord's Prayer, it says forgive as we forgive others. Mm -hmm. And so the reality is if we do not want to even consider the, the physical and the psychological or emotional aspect of unforgiveness, the fact is that our spirituality also rests on this um, unforgiveness. And uh, if we do not forgive others, God cannot forgive us. He mm. says, uh, you know, he's merciful unto those who are merciful. He, so therefore, as we forgive others, our sins as well are, will be forgiven. Amen. 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 Um, Pals, you know, it's, it's okay for us to sit here and discuss the whole idea of forgiveness in our, in our discussion room. But someone might be asking out there, what are the steps for me to forgive? What are the steps that I need to take in forgiving that person? Uh, Katie, it just seems as if you really want to take that ball. What are the steps sh we should take in forgive? And we're not only trying to find that out for ourselves, but for you listeners who are listening, and you know within yourself that you need to set someone loose. 
but you're struggling with the steps to forgive. What are the steps, Paul? Well, the Bible says forgive 70 times 7, which is 490 per day. <laughs> so if a person does you wrong for 489 times, with mm -hmm. one more time you have to forgive. And secondly, nobody is counting. So the essence of it is that whenever someone has done something wrong to us, we are to forgive. Yeah. The Bible says someone hit you in your face and must turn the next side. Oh. It is asking us to be, um, you know, <laughs> humble and selfless and just, you know, Christ-like in all things. Jesus went to the cross as a sheep, knowing that he was going to be crucified. And he, and he is powerful. He, he walked on water, turned water to wine, he healed the sick, raised the dead. But yet... He was like a sheep before the slaughter, being dumb, did not say anything to defend himself. And that is what God expects of us. Mm -hmm. Now, the thing is, um, when we are angry, feeling so hurt and betrayed by this person who has hurt us, a part of the healing process is to admit that we are hurting. Mm -hmm. admit to the, the effect that has been you know what was done has had upon us mm -hmm. and uh, you know whether we admit it to the person I mean the best thing is to admit it to the person to give them an opportunity to, to apologize so but if that is not conducive mm -hmm. or if it is rejected you admit it to the Lord right Mark you're going to talk to God before you go to the first right but the essence is to admit to God let God know. And this is like talking, spilling to God. There's no pretty prayer. It's like, God, this person did this to me and I am hurting. I feel like this. <laughs> but you give it over to God and ask God for healing. And the thing about trying to overcome um, unforgiveness and even sin is to be deliberate, to be consistent, to be Amen. intentional. So yes. we, because the thing is, our mind, we do remember things. When we see the person, it's, we're going to be reminded of what they have done mm -hmm. to us, right? Uh, but the, the physical response or the other, the, the, the responses, the negative responses should not be there. It should not, uh, so it shouldn't be having the, the headache or the belly pain or the diarrhea or the, you know, heart racing situation. We should be calm. And if this person needs our help, we're not going to say that. <laughs> so <what did> I? <laughs> Me, I would never know. Like Christ, we need to help. You know, mm. we need to support. We need to be there for that person. And as the Bible says that, it is as we love one another, even those who hate us and persecute us, the Lord said, bless and pray for and love. As we do those things, then men will know that we are his disciples. Amen. Amen. So, you know, forgiveness is so, it's, it's an essential part of our life. And it is uh, something that is a virtue. It's only God alone can help us in that journey. But we have to want to forgive. Amen. Want to do it. Yes. Amen. G. How G. Right. So, first of all, we need to start off on the premise that... In and of ourselves, forgiveness is going to be hard. We can't do it. Yes. In, yes. in fact, the Bible says that there's a high expectation for those people who depend on him to mm -hmm. forgive. Mm -hmm. Because he says that he then love those who love them. And he says there's nothing special about that. If we just nice to who nice to us, and if we just good to who right. good to us, there's nothing special okay. about that. He says we have to go another wrong higher. And that wrong is being good to people who are not good to us. Mm -hmm. Listen, that's not easy, you know. Not easy. <laughs> that is being asked to continue to show kindness to people who are eternally ungrateful to you. Continue to show kindness to people who deliberately hurt you, right? And so the first step I, I, I'd say that we need to take is that we need to ask the Lord. Mm -hmm. Perhaps it's something that we may need to pray for every single day. Lord, help me to forgive fellow. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because it's not natural, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. yeah, you understand? Mm -hmm. um, I think the other thing too is that sometimes, well, all the time when people hurt you, I think it's very important that you stop to let them know that they have hurt you. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's one of the 
especially depending on how you're growing up, I think a lot of us internalize and we don't express how, what it. people have done to That's us. It. And I think we need to stop and pick up your phone and say, listen, yesterday when I spoke to you, you said X and it hurt me. Uh, because mm. sometimes people hurt us and they don't know that they have hurt us. Mm. So they continue to do it over and over again because we never stop to tell yeah. them that they hurt us and so they don't know, mm. right? Um, the other thing is that even if they continue to hurt you, it would be with their knowledge. So they can no longer say, that they don't know that this particular thing mm. hurts you. So I think it's very important that you stop to tell the person, listen, this is what you did and this is what hurt me. I also think there are some things that you need to take, step that you need to take because if, if someone continues to hurt you over and over again, after a while, it, it, it affects you so much that you can't keep forgiving them. And so sometimes you need to step away from people who hurt you, mm-hmm. you know. Um, um, mom used to tell, us, tell a story when I was a child. She said, that there was a, I think it was a scorpion who was asking the, the, the crocodile to give him a ride across the river. Mm-hmm. And the crocodile says, but you're going to sting me. He says, why would I sting you? I'm, I need to get across the river. Right. But in the middle of the river, the scorpion stung him. And, you know, he turned to him and said, how could you do this? He says, I can't help myself. It's in yeah, my nature. Yeah. There are some people yeah. who can't help themselves. Mm-hmm. And that is the truth. And mm-hmm. if you recognize that, then you need to separate yourself from people like that. Mm-hmm. That's the truth. Mm-hmm. Now, having done that, because you see, if you don't do that, you're going to be required to forgive over and over again. And the Bible says we must forgive over, 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 and over again. It says 70 times mm-hmm. seven. Mm-hmm. You understand? But having done that, the other thing we need to do is to let go. Mm-hmm. Um, and letting go is not easy. But letting go holds, when you don't let go, you're held back. There are people who are unable to move forward with their lives because they hold on to bad relationships so they can't move on to a good relationship. There are people who want to do things but they are untrusting so they don't trust people so they could get a good opportunity but because something failed in the past with somebody and they keep remembering about it, they're not able to move forward. Unforgiveness holds you back. Mm -hmm. Tie your door. Tie your door. Mm. So you you need to let go and you know one of the things I noticed was that when Jesus was on the cross when he was about to, to die he said Father forgive them and these people were in the middle of watching him die and jeering him they didn't ask for forgiveness mm-hmm. so some of the people who we are dealing with will never ask for forgiveness because it's not in them to ask for forgiveness they're too wicked to ask for forgiveness mm-hmm. But you have to understand that the forgiveness is not for them. Mm-hmm. It is for you. And letting go is what is important. If only we would let go, I believe we wouldn't have high blood pressure. I believe we wouldn't have some of the illnesses we have. If we would let go. Because mm-hmm. when we carry hurt in our hearts and mind, we carry people with us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And carry negativity with us. Mm-hmm. And it is so important, as Kaden says, to be purposeful, to be determined, to say, listen, I am not carrying this one, mm-hmm. you know, and I want to go back to the first point I made about not carrying this one, address things as they happen. And I don't say quarrel about every single thing, but I'm saying when something affects you, address it immediately. Let the person know very mm-hmm. early when you're in your workplace and you're working with your staff members and they do something, you know, it's going to affect you if they, if they do it a second time. Address it immediately. When you're mm-hmm. in your home, address it immediately. We uh, A lot of times we don't address things immediately because we tr- we'll want to sweep it under the, the rug for peace sake. Yeah. But real and truly, it hurting us. Mm-hmm. And so yeah. we need to address it. Amen. A lot of things bubbling up in my head while you guys were talking. Who will for something? Because it is okay to say it and okay to outline it, but the reality exists, as Georgette mentioned, or we grow. I can't confront people. That is just me. I never grow up learning to confront people and ways there. So what I do, internalize, I talk to myself, I go into yeah. the bathroom and I rehearse like I'm talking to the person. And I do all type of antics. I even preach sermon when I walk in on the road. Right? To myself and to the person. What am I doing? I am helping to relieve myself. I am helping to set myself free from the bondage 
Because as Georgette rightly mentioned, that thing there, if somebody call you and you know so you have art against them and they call you, your heart going to beat faster. That's not good. Your head, you're, you're going to have a headache that palpitates and it reach right here and it start behaving fast. That's not good. Every time you see the person pass you, your heart start beat and you you just get hungry. But one of the thing that one of the thing that people do, they stay away. A lot of people stay away from that environment or that person. But that doesn't help. Listen, you are talking, and I'm just remembering um, someone to bring something to the to the ward, and uh, a patient stuck it to the ward. <laughs> and he came and um, told me, oh, it is not his responsibility and all the different things. And I'm like, what? <laughs> you know, this is what you guys always do. But apparently he was busy doing something else. So I called the other one and he was saying the same thing too. I'm like, okay, I couldn't wait to reach work the next day. So I went and I did it myself. And I couldn't wait because I didn't remember no level more. You know, um, the level <laughs> they're supposed to go through. So I was supposed to speak to the head of that who was responsible for it. I never remember that. And they said, I'm going to go straight to the CEO. And when, because they were saying that, you know, they got the direction from her. So I went and I said, um, Tell me something. Did you give them this directive? And uh, she said, No. So she, she said, Oh, one of them is on duty you now. So she called. And the person came in and said, no, nothing went like that. And, I, and <laughs> imagine I was saying, um, why, you know, how is it you're going to come and say nothing went like that? But anyhow, he was totally upset because I got him called in the CEO. Every time I passed him after that, he would like shut his face and they're going. So I'd be like, good morning, XYZ. And he would be there ignoring me. If I passed him 40 times, because I didn't have anything against him. It's just that, listen, you're at work, you do your work, right? And then you're going to tell him a lie and all these different things. So he passed 40 times and I'll be like, good morning, so-and-so, good day, so-and-so, good evening, whatever it is. He would not answer. I did it every day. And eventually, I'm telling you, within a space of like a week or two, we were like... <laughs> Like that. These persons will hurt you. People will do all sorts of things to you. And they will not apologize for it. Mm -hmm. But you have to be the bigger person, the better person. It's not yeah. easy, but it, sure. it, 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 it will help you. Yeah. As Georgette has been emphasizing, it helps you more to let go of it, mm -hmm. to forgive the person and genuinely forgive them. Because... Uh, if you if you realize that you're having those symptoms when you see the person, you haven't forgiven. Amen. You haven't forgiven. Amen. But you have to definitely forgive. And it means being deliberate every day, every moment. Forgive. Amen. And coming out of your comfort zone because it's easier to just go in a corner and push up your face and you say she and all that stuff. No. It's, mm -hmm. it's hard to step out and go and talk and show love and care and concern and be genuine about it. Amen. But that is what God expects of us. Amen, amen. Yes, sir. God has been so good that um, right now, I don't think I have a problem with forgiveness. I used to, I remember I used to call it and saying, God, why is it when persons do things, it's like and it doesn't hit me the same time. It's always a delayed reaction. And then I'm like, what, what the point is not rude? <laughs> and then that is when, no, I, I, I go through the emotions and then, you know, thinking about it and then, you know, what I would have done and all these different things. And I said, chop, and it's gone. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, <laughs> I have, you know, so many experiences. But uh, as I have gotten older and more mature, I am truly grateful. You have because, a very important point there. Mature, and I would add the word mature Christian, right? Yes. As some of us, we are in the church, but we are not mature. We are just yes. there, and it, you know, we have to be deliberate. Yeah. Yes, yes. so um, I don't uh, have a problem with forgiving, forgiving others because, yes. um, for one, I don't want the negative emotions. 
Mm-hmm. I don't want to have that. So I'd rather, um, as you, um, Sister Pelo, I'm not the type of person who is confrontational. Mm-hmm. I I try not to react with my first, um, you know, impulse. And uh, so, because some, you know, how you first interpret the situation may be not what it is. Mm-hmm. And so I like to sit back and evaluate the situation to determine what yeah, my yeah. response should be. Yeah. When I do so, I'm able to say to myself whether, you know, it doesn't matter or whether or not I need to address it. Yeah. And uh, I try to do that when I am calm. So yeah. um, it's not when I'm upset. So it will be delayed in the sense that probably it's the next day or a couple hours from the incident. But okay. um, most of the time, I will um say that i did not like that um uh, mark you it wasn't the situation all the time it was uh, something i had to go into not being afraid of, of what person's responses are and uh, being prepared for their um resistance to you um calling them out on what they have done mm-hmm. but uh, as i said that uh, Forgiveness, and I'm emphasizing that, that it has nothing to do with the perpetrator, the person who have done you wrong. It has all to do with you. It benefits you more. Mm-hmm. And uh, especially as Christians, we don't want to be um, self-deceived because if we have not forgiven, if we are holding persons in our heart, we are actually sinning. And mm-hmm. so that we are imperfect. And if we, when we confess our sins to God, having not forgiven someone, God isn't going to hear us. Mm. So we would be lost if we should die or Christ should come in that state. Mm. So to clear my record and to make sure that my record is clean and I can always go to God and when I pray, that's oh, that's another point I wanted to, to bring out as well. Sometimes when we are praying and we are praying and we are asking God of something and God is just silent, it is because we may be unforgiving of others. And that is why we need to be so in tune with ourselves, searching ourselves. Lord, try me. See if there be any wicked way within mm-hmm. me. And so that yeah. God can do things to us. And Amen. Us and For real. And that is why Georgia, no, I can mm-hmm. see Georgia bubbling over there. Because <laughs> when I look at Psalm 51, you know, purge me, purge me. You know, we have to be purged if we're going to move on. Yes, Georgia. Yes, so I was saying, I am not quite where Caden is yet. Yeah, that's it. In terms of forgiveness. Um, But I've done some things that I find help me. You know, like one of the things that Caden says. Um, In the past, I used to be very, 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 very quick tempered. Um, But I've learned over time as I mature to not address the situation immediately. Mm-hmm. And sometimes when I go home and I think about it, I say, you're overreacting, you know, Georgia, that can pass, mm-hmm. you know, so it's not a, not a big deal. But Or I may go home and say, you know, this person was really out of order mm-hmm. and I really need to let this person know that they can't speak to me like that mm-hmm. or treat me like that. You know, so I'm reaffirmed that I have to have that conversation with the person the following day so um, they understand what my position is. And the other thing that helps me is just a reminder that I am so unworthy that God should not forgive me, but he continues to forgive me. And so sometimes when I don't want to forgive somebody, I remind myself that they are deserve, uh, just like how they're deserving of forgiveness because God mm-hmm. forgave me even when I didn't deserve it, you know. Mm-hmm. And the third thing that helps me is understanding that sometimes we don't know what the other person is going through, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and I can think of two examples. I remember I had a cousin who, you know, um, she she borrowed some money um, from my sister. And I knew she had the money. And when my sister died, she didn't feel comfort. I said, you know, I have this money for you. And it made me so angry. Um and then a couple of years later, I found out that at the time she was going through such a difficult period in her life. She was in an abusive relationship. She was overseas and things weren't going well for her. And when I started seeing it from her point of view, mm. I was able to forgive her. Mm. Because 
sometimes we have to stop to see it yeah. from mm. the other person's point of view. Mm. And you know, the third thing for me is I've had situation. I've had a situation where somebody told a blatant lie on me. Mm. And listen, man, when somebody speaks against your reputation yeah. and you can't defend yourself, it, it is the worst thing that anybody can do to you. Mm-hmm. But I've also had experience of God. You know, He says, "I will vindicate you." He says. Vengeance is mine, mm-hmm. you know, and yes. I've learned not to, to fight certain fights. But I've had yes. persons who have hurt me and I have to turn around and say, God have mercy on them, take time with them. Because when, when you start to beat them for what they have done, I actually want to turn around and say, God, we know they deserve it, but yes. take time, yes. take time with them. Yes. So... The, the truth is that if we understand one, that we are unworthy, that we are sinners and that we are not deserving of forgiveness, we would be more tolerant of other people. Amen. And two, if we understand that the battle is not ours, yeah. it's the Lord's, Amen. Um, then we would not take on certain things. We would let go and allow the Lord to deal with it. Because, you know, the Lord promises to remove every stumbling block. And, you know, you say you ask the question, you know, you search yourself. Sometimes we need to search ourselves. Sometimes I have to ask myself, why is it that this person is treating you like, what is it that you have not done right, George? But sometimes we do things that upset other people. We do things that cause other people to want to hurt us. And, and sometimes we do it unknowingly. So we have to look into ourselves also as human beings, you know, because we are not perfect and we hurt people too, you know. And sometimes we need to stop and ask the question because just like us, some of us don't say to the other person, we say, have I hurt you? Mm-hmm. You know, and if I've hurt you, I'm sorry. Sometimes we need to be the one who says you're sorry, even when it's not you supposed to apologize first. Yeah. And the final thing is that the Lord says that when we pray, he says, if we don't forgive him not hearing us, mm-hmm. I want the Lord to hear me. What a bombshell. I want him to hear me. Um, and so I, it's on that basis. I have to say, Lord, sometimes there are some people who have heard someone have to say, Lord, this one hard to forgive. Help me to forgive this one because I want you to hear me. And that is my simple prayer. Please help me to let this one go. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not always easy. Mm-hmm. But with God, all things are possible. Okay. So it's such a wonderful, such a mm-hmm. loving God who I tell you, if he were to treat us, like how we deserve if people were to treat us like how we deserve i mean when i think about growing up when i was a teenager i was so rebellious you know Ooh. um and my mom never gave up on me we went back on her and i was rude and disrespectful yeah. she never gave up on me she continued to love me and show me support and i think to myself what if she had said you know you know no man has been done with you mm-hmm. how different my life would have been and so sometimes when my phone is rude to me and I want to just lock off. Mm-hmm. I remember <laughs> the kindness and love that my mother gave to me. Um, and, and that's the stance we have to take. We're forgiveness. Always remember we are not deserving of it. Mm-hmm. And the persons who hurt us are not deserving of it. But because God does it for us, we should also do it for them. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Ah, Amen. I tell you, some things, were, some things are just covering over me right now because one i'm looking at jesus on the cross pierced him do all manner of things vinegar but he said father forgive them for they know not what they do that's tied into what george just mentioned secondly there is an, an analogy that is in my head but i can't put it together but just pretend like there is this big crocodile heavy crocodile in this big hole big hole and wants to come out of the hole but he cannot come out because he cannot climb up to come out because he's too heavy right i'm going to every time he crawl up i'm going to drop down because he's too heavy that's what forgive, unforgiveness does to us it pulls us down it pulls us me. down and let me use the jamaican term it drags us down Mm-hmm. You understand it drags us down. But every time we forgive someone, every time we empty ourselves, every time we zero in on the problem, zero in on the situation that caused us that trouble, 
every time we analyze it, there should be one way in which we can say, I'm going to have to do this, like George has said, and it has to be done today. I am still in the refiner's process when it comes to that. I am still going through my how to do it. I'm still going through my developing the courage to do it. But I found a way of talking to myself and self-talk work for me. So back to the crocodile, he's coming up. But he cannot get a grip because of the, the deep hole that he's in. But he got some help, some man, tie a rope around him and he was able to be dragged up to the surface where one, a two foot, a two front foot can come over. Right? So he got a grip. Those two front foot represent the Holy Spirit in our lives. Only the Holy Spirit can help us to forgive, to, to loosen that person from our grip of unforgiveness. And as we so ask God to help and we get that grip to move from one stage to the other, then our entire body now becomes so light that we can cross over on the surface of peace. Because when we do not forgive, we cannot have peace. We cannot have peace in our hearts. We may appear to be peaceful and at peace, but we're not at we're not. We don't have peace. Because that peace only comes from God when we have a free spirit. And I know people, I know people, church people and otherwise, who would use the term, I will never forgive. Yes. But I'm telling you today, my friends, my listeners, I'm telling you today that you can forgive. Amen. Because there is a little thought that comes to my mind. It says, Hatred is like acid. It burns the container which is it stored in, which it is stored in, than the Amen. object which it is thrown at. So if we don't want to be burned from within, we have to release that person in forgiveness. So how are we going to make the first step, you might be asking? Talk, write, email, text, something make the first step and once you make that first step you will get a grip of how to make the second step and the third step and once you're fully there you will know because your body will flourish your face will look beautiful your smile will radiate your eyes will pop open and you will just have this bounce in your step because you have now loosened someone from your grip of unforgiveness Today I pray, my pals and I, we pray that you will do that one thing that you need to do to get over to the other side of being a happy person when you forget. Pals, if you have a last word, just share it and we will pray together today. I just wanted to add also that um, um, equally important is uh, also um seeking for forgiveness from others as well when we are the ones who have done them wrong um because uh, you know the bible says that before we go and give our sacrifice if you remember that we have wronged someone we should put our sacrifice down or give down and go and you know um sort that out before we come and so it is equally important that if we have wronged someone that we, you know, basically put our pride down and go and ask for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. um, because and uh, even if the person has not forgiven, the fact that we have repented um, of what we have done to them, you know, that, uh, that alone will free us from whatever wrong that we have done. And so I'm also encouraging um, us and our um, viewers, whoever who have wronged, um, seek forgiveness from them. Yes, so it is said that hurting people end up hurting others. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is also said that when the person who you are who hurt you are those person who you 
are more likely not to want to pray for, but they are the ones who you should pray the most for. Mm -hmm. So I want you to remember those things. People hurt for a reason. You don't just get up and hurt other people. Mm -hmm. There's a reason behind it, and sometimes we need to stop to ask, what is that reason? Um, and also we need to understand that people who hurt us, they're the ones who we need to pray for the most. Amen, amen. And as we close today, I just want to say, um, to myself, to our, my pals here, and to our listeners, pray about it. Prayer does work. Prayer does work, and prayer will help us to make that step um, to forgiveness. And secondly, um, when we forgive, we are giving that person another chance to 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 freedom, right? And third. We're not God, so we cannot hold people hostage. We're not God. Only God alone can judge. And the, the song says, Chief of sinners, though I be, Jesus shed his blood for me. Amen. Are you having a problem with forgiveness today? Are you having it hard to forgive someone? Does someone have you up for so long that it has become a norm between you and that person? Today, I will pray for you that whatever it is, you will be loosened in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Sweet loving Lord and Father of mankind, we come before you today not because we are good, but because you are good and you are worthy. Lord, I am not here to put on any fancy word in prayer and about prayer today. I am here to let you know that we are sinners and we need you. We are so sinful sometimes we are unforgiving in the process. And Lord, sometimes we hurt people and people hurt us. And the cycle just continues for years, for months. And God, it hurts. It ties us down. Lord, it shackles us. It bounds us up into some rope that is tied and tangled up. And we feel like we cannot be loosened. We cannot be free. But today, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray, God, that you will cramp and paralyze every, every held of forgiveness that is in someone's heart today. I pray that the unforgiving spirit will be loose, will be unshackled, that you will just burst that, that, that tight wrap, that tight grip upon someone who is struggling with unforgiveness. Lord God, the hurt and the pain that unforgiveness causes us who do not forgive. It is better we forgive someone and set them free. The headache that was mentioned, the heartache, the palpitation, the sickness that come upon our bodies because we are unforgiving, we are unloving. Because God, sometimes the foundation of that unforgiveness is love. We do not love as we ought to. So God, I ask you, the person that is struggling right now here on this page that is listening, that is struggling with unforgiveness for years, for months, for weeks, for, Lord, I beg you to minister to that spirit of unforgiveness right now. I beg you to lead them to that quiet place of forgiveness. I beg you, God, to, to, to propel them into the avenue to forgive. Jesus, I ask that you will walk with that person. Hold their hands. Lead them, Jesus. Carry them. The song says, when I reach the end of myself, carry me. Lord, when that person reach the end where they feel like they cannot forgive, carry them, Jesus. Carry them, Jesus. Carry them when they reach that spirit of anger and hate and, and don't trodden behavior, Lord, and the fire of hatred that bubbles in them. Carry them, Jesus. Carry them to the foot of the cross so that they can be melted, so that they can be loosened, so that they can be set free. Jesus, hear our prayers now from this discussion room and in this conversation God if we have said anything that is not right Lord help us but if we have said the things that can encourage a soul out there let that soul be encouraged to move to the next level in Jesus Christ our Lord we pray in your name we pray Jesus Amen, Amen.
when I reach the end of myself. Father, carry me. Yes. When we reach the end of ourselves, Lord, carry us. Carry us, Jesus. Carry us. Carry us to the well. Walk with us. Carry us, Jesus. The song talk about footprints in the sand. Lord, and it says you are carrying that person. Carry us. To the through the through the spirit of unforgiveness to forgiveness. Carry us, Jesus. Carry us, Lord. We're pleading and begging you. Carry us. Empty my heart. Empty their heart. Empty our heart. But carry us, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Until we meet right here again in Power Puff Pals discussion room, we ask that you will walk in the spirit of God's forgiveness because you can't do it of yourself. Only Jesus Christ can do it through you. Amen. So until next time, in our next episode, walk good as we practice forgiveness as Christ forgives. Amen.